How is money created? Hi, I'm Richard Vague with Tycos. We hear all the time about how the government prints money, how the government printed too much money, etc., etc. It's one of the most popular phrases in all of economics, and yet it's not particularly true. But luckily, we don't have to wonder or theorize because we can see exactly how money is created and exactly how much money is created in the easily accessible quarterly national account reports of the Federal Reserve, commonly known as the Z1 report. Money is not some mysterious, ineffable thing. It's deposits, like your checking account, plus currency, the dollars you have in your pocket. When somebody refers to the money supply or the famous M2 or similar, that's completely or almost completely what they're referring to. In this Fed data, we see that in the year 2000, the total money supply was $5.4 trillion. Of that, the vast majority, $4.9 trillion or 90%, was deposits, checking accounts and the like and the rest was currency, or as we call it, cash. By the end of 2024, 24 years later, the total money supply defined by the Fed and others as deposits and currency had grown by 17.7 trillion to $23.1 trillion. That's an astonishing amount of growth. Not surprisingly, 90% or $16 trillion of that growth was in deposits and the remaining 10% in currency. Deposits are by far and away the predominant form of our world's money. So whenever I say the word deposits, I might as well be saying the word money. So how did deposits quadruple from $4.9 trillion in, to $20.9 trillion in 24 years, this $16 trillion increase? Where in the world did this $16 trillion come from? When I've asked that question to others, some have answered the question by saying it was households saving money that created those deposits. But when Jane Doe gets a check from, say, her rich uncle and deposits it in the bank, her deposits go up, but the rich uncle's deposits go down by that exact amount. So the amount of deposits in the system as a whole stays exactly the same. So that's not the answer. Others have answered that those deposits come from profits that businesses retain. So for example, as business XYZ gets paid for a service by Jane Doe and retains that payment, its deposits go up. Well, yes, that's true, but Jane Doe's deposits go down by that exact amount so the amount of deposits in the system stays exactly the same. So that's not the answer. Then again, some people say that when gover the government deficit spends, you know, spends more than it takes in, that creates money. But when the government issues debt, which, is all, which it always does in an amount exactly equal to the deficit, deposits actually go down, as an example. When John Smith pays $100,000, for example, to buy a treasury bond, John Smith's deposits go down. Yet, the government always spends that money pretty much right away. Let's say in this example, by paying Betty West for consulting services. So John Smith's deposits have gone down, but Betty West's deposits have gone up by that exact amount. So the amount of deposits in the system the money supply has stayed exactly the same. Finally, some say that when the Federal Reserve buys Treasury securities in the open market, which is called open market operations, OMO, money is created. And bingo, they are correct. When those Treasury securities are purchased from a non-bank private sector entity, a household or pension fund, that's what happens. Let's say it buys a million dollar bond from Bill Jones. In that case, Bill's deposits go up by a million. Voila, this is an increase in deposits or money. But in this 24 year period that we're looking at, 
The net increase in reserves created by Fed open market operations uh, was only $2.9 trillion. And remember that deposits increased by $16 trillion. So Fed open market operations only added $2.9 trillion, and that leaves us $13.1 trillion in deposit growth unexplained. So how do we solve this mystery? Where did these $13.1 trillion in deposits come from? That's actually easy. Bank loans created almost that entire amount, and we can see that right in the Fed's data because bank loans grow by that commensurate amount. Bank loans during this 24-year period increased by $10 trillion, from $4.9 trillion to $14.9 trillion. That alone created $10 trillion in new deposit. Here's how. There's a common misunderstanding that banks take in deposits and then lend those funds out to other borrowers. That isn't how modern banking works. When a bank makes a loan, it doesn't pull money from someone else's account. Can you imagine if the bank took your money and lent it to someone else? You'd be pretty surprised if you went to spend that deposit and it wasn't there. Instead, the bank creates a brand new deposit essentially out of thin air at the same moment it books the loan by simply making an electronic credit to the borrower's checking account. Those are the two signs to this double entry transaction. On the bank's balance sheet, the loan is recorded as an asset and the borrower's deposit is recorded as a liability. That new deposit is new money injected into the economy. Banks also create deposits when they purchase debt securities, treasuries, agency bonds, or municipal bonds from households or other non-bank investor. That's the exact equivalent of the bank making a loan, and in fact is the bank making a loan. To make that purchase of a debt security, the bank credits the seller's account with a new deposit and records the security as an asset, just as it would a loan. From 2000 to 2024, banks bought an additional $3 trillion of mortgage and corporate bonds, up from $1.4 trillion to $4.4 trillion. In addition, bank purchases of treasuries from individuals creates another $1.5 trillion. More than our equation needs, but there's some technical things that happen that reduce deposits, primarily equity investments by bank parent company couple of other small technical things. So to con consolidate all of what I just said into two simple statements, bank lending and related activity created $13.1 trillion and Fed open market operations created $2.9 trillion. Those together are the source of the $16 trillion in deposit growth from 2000 to 2024. This phenomenon is crucial to understand since it is the very loan and deposit growth that powers U.S. GDP growth. That means that banks created 82% of all the deposits in this particular period, and the Fed created eight, Fed open market operations created 18% of the deposits created. In periods before 2000, the bank's percentage of the money created hovered around 90%. In addition to all this, the Fed also issues currency through the banking system. That cash is then held most often directly by households and businesses. Currency is a liability of the Federal Reserve and an asset held by the public. From 2000 to 2024, currency in circulation increased by about $1.7 trillion, bringing the total growth in money, deposits plus currency, to roughly $17.7 trillion. There you have it. For all of American history from 1787 forward, banks have created by far the most money in the country. It's right there in plain sight in the financial records of the country. That's why banks are so disproportionately important in our economy or any economy, for better or for worse. And as we will touch on in other videos, it is this very deposit creating or money creating power that can lead to so much destruction in the form of our country's greatest financial crises. Because of this, banks need to be strongly and astutely managed or the system is at risk. 
and we have seen too many instances where that was not true. That's why it's so hard, in theory, to get a bank charter, and that's why banks are so heavily regulated, examined, and supervised. We have all seen that all too often that regulation and supervision is not remotely adequate, as was so abundantly evident in the recent collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and earlier, frankly, in the global financial crisis itself. That's it for this week. Thanks.